What's up, my dear friends of the world? This is a problem that needs to be discussed. I see a lot of performers that don't really get compensated what they're worth as far as performing live, and they don't know how to negotiate doing a live performance and what to charge for the gigs. And they basically just take whatever the venue or the restaurant is willing to pay and they just do the gig and they're devaluing themselves. And I wanna share with you on what I do to get paid what you're worth and what I've helped others to kind of use when they start to negotiate so that you can get compensated for what you deserve to be compensated for. And when you do it this specific way that I'm about to share with you, I broke it down into simple steps, then you should always know how to negotiate and you should be able to land some nice high paying live gigs. So if you're a musician or a performer, anyone that like a stand up comic, anyone that does like a live gig, this should help you. Okay. So let's go to camera number one. What? Oh, here's camera number one. Here's camera number two. Okay, whatever. We don't do any long drawn out intros. We get right to it here on the Paul the Trombonist channel of fun. So it's pretty simple, guys. So the first step we want to do is we need to present a case study. So the first establishment, venue, restaurant is going to be a case study that you're going to use an example to get future gigs. So it's very important that you have results with one case study and then you use it to fuel the rest of your career performing, okay? So you may take a little bit of a hit at the beginning, but it's fine because that's gonna draw you more business as a performer, all right? So I just wanna make that clear. So we need to hit these venues with a very specific strategy. So we wanna approach them and we wanna say something like this. What is a customer worth to your business? Right. So everyone has a value that they've, if any good business owner would know this, what a customer's worth to them. So you say like, okay, yeah, just, you know, before we get into our fee for performing, what is a customer worth to you guys? Like uh, that comes in and then how many of them become regulars that are a new customer? And we need to get that number from these venues and from this restaurant because we're going to use it as leverage to negotiate our rate. All right. So what we want to do at this point, we want to know what a customer is worth to this venue, this business. So whether they are doing ticket sales, whether they have the average value per person eating at their establishment, whatever that is, we need to know these metrics. So, hey, I changed my outfit for you. So I'm going to lowball these numbers just for sake of clarity with the math to make it simple. So hypothetically, they're like a, a customer is worth $20 to us how many of new customers come back, right? And they should know this if they are a good business owner, right? If not, they say, well, if you were to guess, what would you say? Let's say that like 10% of them become regular customers, right? At $20, 10%. So what we need to do is we just do some simple math to them. And then we say a situation like this. Okay, well, if I were to get you 50 people in here, so that would be $20 that night, right? Let's just do some simple math. So we say, okay, $20 a customer's worth to you, right? 10% of them come back, right? And 20 times 10% is two of those will come back every month, right? So two, uh, so two times 20 is gonna be $40 a month right times 12 a year right so then what you're gonna do is that's gonna be uh 40 times 12 all right so just from there it's gonna be a recurring revenue of 480 dollars a year plus the 20 dollars times uh, 50 people that you brought in right so 20 times 50 uh, so it's a thousand dollars right so basically if their numbers are correct which they should know this if they're a business owner. If you bring in 50 people, they should make $1,480. So if that's the case, all you need to do is present, okay, so just so we're clear, you're going to pull in $1,480 if 50 people come to your restaurant or whatever, right? And then as long as your fee 
is less than what they're pulling in and they feel they are getting way more value booking you than if they were not to book you. So once it's clear in their mind, the cost of not booking you is costing them more than the cost of booking you. And they are very clear in their mind and you wanna have a little notepad too, <laughs> if you can really show and spell it out to them, that really helps. And once they see that, they have to do the deal and book you for the show, okay? And then they say yes, you say, okay, great. So I'm gonna get you 50 people and our fee, all it's gonna be, you keep the thousand dollars and our fee is gonna be $480, that's it. So I still think that's a low ball fee. That may be good if it's like a solo DJ or solo performance and everything. But if it's a full band, you gotta start somewhere. But once you start to show that you're pulling in the numbers and you start to have this, an authority on this and starting to build that audience, then you can renegotiate the numbers and it will start to snowball at that point. Does that sound fair? All of a sudden you just got yourself a $480 gig. Now you can play with these numbers a bit, but that's the basic concept of it. So it's all based on numbers. They don't care about how great of a performer you are. All they care about are they're gonna be people that are there. And if they won't complain about the performance, <laughs> if they're entertained, obviously they, they want you to be pleasing the audience but it's all based on numbers. So please adapt this to what you're doing. I know there's different variables depending on what you're looking to do, but this is really how you negotiate anything, not just gigs. So anytime you need to negotiate anything, once the value exceeds the price of not working with you, that's when the deals are made. So keep that in mind. It's really important in life just in general. What I advise is for you guys to start to present it this way. And then when you do one case study and you say, hey, look, we were at this place. We were able to bring in these amount of people. They made this amount of dollars. So let's go. Let's talk. Now, how do we have consistency on drawing people? Well, the easiest way I found is to build some sort of a newsletter. So everyone that's at your gigs, you want to collect the contacts. You want to build a newsletter online. And the more that you have a bigger list, the more leverage you have and the more consistency you have in packing the places and having people come to your shows. And you can present this to all kinds of venues and then that's how you book out your calendar, guys. It's pretty simple. But it's all based on math and numbers and understanding what the value is to these places per entity, per human, and then just doing a simple calculation and then presenting it that way. And once they see that the value they get from you is way more than they're paying you, then that's when the deal is made. The problem that most performers have is they just say their fee without presenting the value first. And this is how you can land high paying gigs consistently. And then you can have a stack of testimonials. I was at this place, this many people came, this is what happened to their business. I was at this place, this is what happened, this is what happened to the business. And all of a sudden, you can start to up your fee and up your fee once you prove you get results for venues, restaurants, or whatever. So, I hope that was helpful. If you're new here, subscribe. My name is Paula Trombonis. And if you're interested in building that newsletter and really building that distribution where you have consistency, I have a free class that's going to be up in the description right now on how to build that distribution. So you can always get your message directly from you to your audience and to get the word out there. If you're performing live or if you got anything going on online, I've found no better way than building up that newsletter. So the free class is up. It's in the description below. And I'm on a mission, guys, to uh, build up this channel to 100,000 subscribers. We're halfway there. So thank you, everyone that subscribed. And I want to unbox the YouTube 100,000 award for my nephew. He's been asking about it. He loves YouTube and everything. So it's one of my goals. So if you do that, if you found value in this, that would be absolutely amazing. And let me know in the comments what type of performance you do, what type of live gigs you're looking to get, and what type of videos you may want to see from me in the future. And we're going to go now to camera number one. This is camera number one. This is camera number two. See, when you switch it like that, the engagement comes around. That's what, uh, that's what all of the gurus say, that you gotta switch angles once in a while so that people are engaged with the video. <laughs>
Well, Paul the Trombonist, my banana, my trombone, you guys are the best. Wishing you well. Take care.